Welcome to another Cup of Joe. I'm your host, Joe Tumalo, here with the awesome Klein Tops again, Jenny and Doug. What are the coffee cups you guys have here? Ooh, mine says it would be so nice if something would make sense for a change. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. Nice. Back to the love it. Back to the basics. Doug? And mine is a travel mug from where I work here at the University of Delaware. University of Delaware. Doug is senior leadership and Jenny's uh, consultant. Her consulting firm is called Philanthropy Ops. And you do all the stuff that most of us gift officers don't want to be bothered with, right? Yeah, I love it too. But I love also making it easier and simple for all you gift officers. What a concept. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I'd love your opinion. We, we haven't, you guys have done a couple of shows with me before. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And here's my question. So most of my work, vast majority is plan giving. But as I always talk about, it's not just, okay, I, they're just a plan giving prospect. Who knows? They might be a capital cam a campaign project, a prospect or a major giving prospect. I'm not going to stereotype or profile them until we've had a conversation. So I've always had, you know, always kind of very general. And if it makes sense, go down the plan giving route. But sometimes in some of the work I do, I know a lot of, especially major gift officers, it's mostly bringing the cash gifts. And in plan giving, my experience is that I'm dealing with mostly Long-time givers, right? 10 years or more, the traditional way of looking at that. And it's, I think it's easier to talk to them about doing more because obviously they're really involved. Anytime I cross over to, and I've been doing a lot in healthcare and making some grateful patient calls to wealthy people. And anytime I cross over to that, they really haven't made any donations or they've made small ones. And we're really not sure. I feel like, how do I do this without coming across like I'm a hard salesman? Like trying to get you, you need, I always say to people, you need to feel good about anything that you're doing as a donor, what you're doing currently, a conversation, a visit. I want you to, I don't want you to feel pressure. But meanwhile, I'm under pressure to bring in a ton of cash as a major gift officer. So how do I walk that balance of, <laughs> I got to make my numbers. <laughs> we need to raise this money and we can't, I don't want to hard sell this person. Yeah. Thoughts? Well, I think, yeah, Joe, I mean, you know, you, you can't force people to give, and that's not our job, in my opinion, right? Our, our job is to provide them with options, share with them the opportunities, um, and figure out what it is they care about. And I think, you know, very often, you know, we are reaching out to individuals that I would say have very little connection to the organization that we're working with. And that makes it challenging, because if there's not a connection between the organization and the individual, why would they want to support it? And so I think, you know, we, we do our best to try to educate, try to make the case as to why, why supporting this organization is a good thing. Um, but you can't, you know, if the connection doesn't exist, we can't, we can't, I, I would say we can try to change that and we can work towards changing that, but it's not always easy. Um, and so I think sometimes those outside of our world don't recognize how important the connection is to why individuals will choose to give back to an organization. Jenny, you introduced me to the awesome Shannon Tower, mm -hmm. who has been giving me some coaching around major gifts and grateful patient calls. She's phenomenal. I'm trying to get her to do a cup of joe, but she doesn't want 100%. to do okay. <laughs> but she's, You're awesome, Shannon, right? If In case you're watching. And I had a session, coaching session with her last week, and she gave me the idea, or she really presented it. And I'd love your opinion on this. Difference between a thankful donor and a truly grateful donor. You know what I mean by that? So a thankful donor, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love University of Delaware. It's great. Yep. Go Blue Hens. Did I say that right? Go Blue Hens. You did. But yeah, yeah we go to the, uh, I go to the uh, alumni reunions every five years, mm -hmm. 10 years. Do I want to do more? Giving you a thousand bucks a year now. You know, that I'm, I'm thankful as opposed to, oh my God, I would not be yeah. where I am in my career without University of Delaware, right? Uh, that yeah. to me... It seems like two different types of people, right? So yeah, absolutely. Maybe, maybe it, what I'm thinking of the pressure is on the thankful donor. Mm -hmm. That's like, oh, you want, when I make my calls, like the grateful patient calls, many times people say, oh, you want money. You're from the, you're from the mm -hmm. development office. You want money. Only if you feel, again, only if you feel good about doing that, but I just feel, and maybe it's, maybe it's my head trash. And this is important. We don't talk about mindset. I do, but I don't mm -hmm. think a lot of people in our space talk about the mindset. Let's face it. A lot of people don't make calls and we've been successful in our business 
because we do the work that a lot of people don't want to do, pick up the phone and call, call yeah. people consistently, yeah. right? So it's, is it is it just my head trash of thinking of, yeah, I am a fundraiser. Oh, this I'm annoying this person. It's like, uh, nobody wants, you know, it's like insurance salespeople. Oh my God, you're trying to sell me you know, at, a, at a cocktail party. Oh, they're trying to sell me insurance. Let me, let me go excuse myself. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Is it, is yeah, it? Yeah, you're. You're so you're the connector. So when you talk about thankful versus grateful, that sparks something in my head. Because when we're when I'm doing modeling for folks, I'm taking all of their data. And oftentimes people want to just prioritize the prospects based on wealth. Like who's wealthy? Who can we go after? Because we want to bring the cash in. Well, go, excuse me, go wealthy. after. Exactly. Excuse me. That that fits yeah. what I'm saying. Go after as opposed to pursue. Right? Exactly. And the people who are wealthy, it does not mean they're connected. Like Doug said, they're not connected to you. They have no desire necessarily to give back to you. So we focus not just on the wealthy, right? They're not ready necessarily to give back. We have to focus on the likely to give, the connection to you, the affinity, the desire to want to give back. Those are the grateful versus I'm just thankful. And the grateful will float to the top because they had some kind of transformational impact or some kind of experience at the university or the hospital that is like, I am like hundred percent in someone should just connect with me. And it's those who are highly engaged, highly connected that should be prioritized. And the people that are just thankful, you need to engage them more. You put them in a different segment to engage them more, find out more about what they're interested in figure out what kind of uh, connection you can increase to get them from thankful to grateful. I love that analogy, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, using it around higher education, for example, where I work, um, we do have a lot of alumni who are very thankful that they graduated from the University of Delaware and are, are thankful for the degree they received. Um, I would say, are they grateful? Probably most maybe don't think of themselves as grateful. And so it's more challenging, as Jenny said, to figure out how to make that connection. But what we often find is those that are thankful usually are not as informed. And so we have to do a better job of how we inform those who are thankful about what our organization is doing, who we're helping, and what are the ways that their support, if they're already giving, is making a difference. And I think that's how we start to move people from being just thankful to really feeling grateful. You know, you just sparked an idea. That was awesome, guys around and maybe the like for university i'm not going to mention people can look it up on linkedin my university yeah. alma mater but i drifted away from them now i'm very critical i'm in the business because i wasn't connected we had a pretty for us a, a large plan gift intention that i took away and gave to somebody else another very very worthy cause more so because there was it was it's a, it's a healthcare organization and it's more related to a, a family uh, medical situation that they took care of, but I felt disconnected. Yes, I'm very grateful for the education I got, and I I don't I'm not sure that I would be where I am now without that education there. But as an adult, I feel like we dis I know we disconnected, mm -hmm. and may and I'm not blaming them, I'm not name saying who they are, but if maybe if well the other thing is on the plan giving side we're not major giving donors or prospect. So I get it. And they're really busy look, going after this big cash gift. But on the plan giving side, if we were more connected, then maybe I would be more go from thankful to truly grateful. So all that to say is even in higher ed or, or independent schools, it, do, it doesn't always have to be back then when I was a student is my connection, my, my gratitude. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's as an adult, mm -hmm. I've been so connected that, oh my gosh, I love these people, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but what would you need, Joe? So as Doug mentioned, informing you to get you more connected. What would you need to feel more connected to your alma, alma mater? To have somebody, uh, have a gift officer ask that exact question, Jenny. Okay. And most don't. And I'm not picking on my university, but most yeah. don't, right? What so, do you need to feel more connected? What would you like to see from us? I don't want to go to luncheons. I don't want to go to dinners. I don't like those things. How about, uh, I love training and coaching. How about mentoring kids? that want to get into fundraising or sales you know, or something that, or volunteering on site on a weekend or something with the kids that, that helps us, my wife and I feel really connected to the mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I interrupted you, Doug. 
Yeah, no, I see. You know, you mentioned about having a gift officer ask you and not all organizations have gift officers, right? And yet they all face a similar challenge of how do we make these donors or these stakeholders move from being thankful to being grateful? And so, I'm, you know, again, I don't think it always has to be a gift officer, right? The university sure. or the organization can think about what are the ways we can ask those questions and learn that information and find ways to build a stronger connection. How about a board member? Hello. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Any volunteers? Sure. Volunteers. Yep. Students? Don't you have students make calls? We do have students make calls. Um, again, so I think depending on the kind of organization, there's yeah. lots of different ways to do that outreach. But I think what's most important is that you're doing that outreach and you're asking those questions. Yeah. A quick side note about the board members. Years ago, I was on a, a committee, not the, I wasn't on the top board, and we would have these donor dinners. And the board members would all sit at one table. And again, I'm in the business, so I'd be more critical. I'm like, you know, hey, we're donors. We're playing giving donors. I'm on the I'm on the advisory board or whatever the board was. And and I'm like the kids at Thanksgiving where they put us in the in the rec room at the kids <laughs> table. The little so, table. Yeah. So I always suggest to clients when you have events like that, spread the board members out. If you have 20 board members, have them all one sit at each separate table, as opposed to all of them like a high school cafeteria where you have these clicks. All the athletes are here, all the nerds are here. Where were you, Doug? Oh <laughs> well, no, you were an athlete, right? You were an athlete. Uh, at times, I tried to be hey, an yes. athlete. Yes. Yeah. Who's gonna? Sure, how they, how are we gonna find out, right? Who's yeah. gonna? Yeah. Go for yes. You make a good point, though. It's spreading out. It's building relationships. It's building connections. Like, stop treating them like cash machines, right? We got often here not transactional, right? Relationship, meaningful. Figure out what, the, like you, you're interested in mentoring kids. That's a perfect opportunity to connect you with the volunteer office, get you involved in some way and start to build that connection. So that's yeah. great. Good stuff, guys. Thank you, as always. Takeaways would be... So we talked about thankful versus highly grateful concept. Mm -hmm. Think about that, develop it on your own. If anybody has any feedback on that, we welcome that, of course. Yeah. And then we talked about, what else? You I guys are younger than I am, I forget. Yeah, something Find Jenny ways said to that's- to increase the connection. Yep. Right? Yep. So but I think segmenting, Jenny, you talked about knowing who yes. your grateful, right, folks are, but then who are your thankful? And there's a different approach for both. Um, and it's easy to kind of focus on the grateful and not- worry about the thankful but i think there's great opportunities with both of those segments yeah, so we you only don't have just, so much time in your day to focus exactly we, we don't have to spend 100 percent of our time chasing yep. the thankfuls right For, or i mean chasing the how would i say the gratefuls but see if we can convert uh cultivate the thankfuls that come yeah. over to the grateful don't yeah mm -hmm. don't forget about the thankfuls and, and figure out a way to be able to try to hopefully move them to be grateful awesome yep. And how can folks get in touch with you, awesome people? So for me, you can reach me. I'm on LinkedIn. I do a lot. So LinkedIn is Jay Kleintop. I also have a newsletter there you can subscribe to, uh, or you can also go to my website, which is philanthropyops.com. Mr. Kleintop? Yeah, for me, I love talking to organizations, small to medium size, about their individual giving programs. So if you have questions, want to have a discussion, please reach out, Doug, at individualgiving.com. But no plan giving. You talk to me about that. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Take Thank care. You. Thanks, Joe. Take care. Bye.